After 16 years of climbing, training, and learning, I wondered, was I ready to climb the heralded nose? Was I ready to touch the biggest, most technical, and most dangerous climb of my life? Most parties require four to six days to climb the nose. Think about that. Once you start, you don't touch the ground for almost a week. Luckily, while living in the valley for the year, my friend Anuk aided me in my quest to attempt what the locals call the big stone. It was a strange expedition. We both worked nights full time in the valley. As such, we only had two days off a week. Now, normally, you'd climb the nose in one shot, but we had to go up and down, up and down, up and down. We spent the first day climbing almost 500 feet, a mere one-sixth the climb. We then rappelled all the way back down, leaving ropes fixed on the wall. Our second day, we climbed our fixed ropes to our high point, and then climbed an additional 600 feet before again returning to the valley floor. We left over a thousand feet, still a mere one third the climb, fixed with rope. What would it mean to complete the remaining two thirds of the climb, I wondered? Our final push started like this. I got out of work at 2 a.m., slept for an hour, met Nanook, drove to the trailhead, and hiked in. 16 hours later, at sunset, we reached Camp 6, our home for the evening. We settled into our sloping four by six foot natural rock ledge, and I realized, after drinking over four liters of water that day, I had yet to pee. Dehydrated as fuck, we slept like the dead. We rose the following day and were ready to climb before dawn. I will never forget standing there and watching the sunrise. The ground, a staggering 2,000 plus feet below me. Almost out of water, we were unable to eat and allowed ourselves a mere one swallow per pitch from the remaining single liter we share between us. Climbing like our lives depended on it, and in a way, they did, we sprinted to the top. Arriving five and a half hours later, we collapsed. Luckily, we found a water cache and spent the next hour splitting a gallon of water, eating, and for the first time in two days, having a pee. I spent the week in reflection as I recovered and worked every night. To use a quote, Sagyal Rinpoche, a Tibetan Lama, once mused, living with the immediacy of death helps you sort out your priorities in life. It helps you to live a less trivial life. It's funny. My mother wants and has wanted my entire life for me to get married and have kids. But she said she finally came to peace with it when I got out of college because she realized, and these are her words, not mine, you already are in love, my dear. It just happens to be with the mountains. I just hope that someday you'll meet a nice strong girl who likes them too and wants kids. Well, we'll see.